church. Can we give Jesus a wonderful praise? We exalt him this morning, Lord, and we glorify your wonderful name. Before you sit down, we want to just welcome Cape Town this morning, Pastor Sam, Pastor Pam, and the entire church from North Campus here in Johannesburg to you. We want to say we love you. We're so excited to see what God is doing amongst you. So church, can we give them a big God bless you? Good to have you joining us this morning. Come on, be seated, everybody. Thank you, worship team. Right, church, we are in for a wonderful week. That is coming, and I want to just talk into that and share about that. But first, we're going to receive a love offering to the Lord. And um, we have updated our our giving platform, our website. And so if you um, are... If you connect to the QR code that's um, on the screen or just go to our webpage, that's actually one of the easiest ways to connect to Axe Church and giving. Go to to our webpage, axechurch.co.za. And or you scan this code and go to the giving tab. And there's about seven or eight ways to give. So all the apps, every Apple Pay, whatever, Whatever you have is there, um, credit card, debit card, and so when, when the Lord is speaking to you, this is, this is the way to give. And it's always the best to respond in the moment. Amen. I don't, I don't give the devil a chance to talk me out of anything. I, I respond before he speaks. And then we, uh, that's the best way to do it. So it's all updated. Easiest ways to give is, is online. Thank you for your generosity. We are going into a conference. Now, this, this week, it's been an unusual week because I have had four people come to me with testimonies this, just this week of what God has done either in a service um, or in their lives. And there, there's, there's two and two. There's two financial miracles where God has taken people through a process. There's no quick fix with this thing. God takes us through a process where we are, where we activate the supernatural and the blessing and the favor of the Lord in our lives. God is more interested in your heart than he is in what he can get to you. When our heart is right, he gets it through us. And that is more important. Then there were two testimonies of, of healing. And I'm going to do this in the conference. We're gonna, I'm going to share those with you. So this is what I believe th- that the Lord is saying to us as a church. Because this is how God speaks to me. See what the Lord is saying. He gives signs. Right? And the Lord wants to shift us financially as a church. And He wants us to know that supernaturally He is present. And this is powerful. This is what's going to happen. Bible says, give and it shall be given. Church, there's no getting away from it. The key to opening doors is first to give. It's an action. It's an action. All of the supernatural is an action. There was first, there's a first a response somehow in faith. And then the Lord acts. And that is how we open the favor of God on our lives. Can I have an amen, somebody? Amen. So, are you ready? I want you just to just bow your heads, just pray. Just say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Dear Holy Spirit, speak to me now. What do you want me to give and to sow? And teach me to hear your voice and obey your voice. In Jesus' name I pray. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for what you are doing amongst us and what you want to do in your church worldwide. We bless our giving and our offering right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, that every need is met and that there's more than enough. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Amen, Cape Town. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. And uh, I want to just share with you this morning a 
a, a message on uh, what does the, uh, the bush say, the fiery bush of Moses, the burning bush speaks, and I know that God is speaking to us. We're about to go into a prophetic conference where the Lord is going to speak into the atmosphere, into our nation, into our church, and into your life. I believe that with all of my heart. Somebody say, the Lord speaks. And He speaks today. And He speaks to me. Yes. I see about five of you believe that. Say it again. He speaks to me. Amen. Um, we're starting on Thursday night, church. We're going to have a we're going to have a packed out church, and um, this is what I want to do. This is what I felt to do this morning, uh, just for the staff to hear what I'm saying. Is that we are going to, um, if you come on Thursday, Friday night, and for some reason there's no space, we're going to have. I, I want to have like a, a little. Uh, you know, a little pass or some kind of a ticket going to give you. So the next night, if you come, 30 minutes early, I'm going to have a seat for you. If you're later than 30 minutes, then uh, you missed the game, right? So I'll, we'll do that. If the gate is closed, we're going to give you a ticket. You come the next day 30 minutes early, there will be seats for you. We're going to give you priority entrance, right? Because people are coming from all over Johannesburg. Don't, don't come like Sunday morning, two minutes past starting time. This is, a, this is a conference. It's a national conference. But it's first to us. Amen. It's first to family. The Lord is speaking to us. And I have great anticipation in my heart of what God's about to do. Um, so we'll do that Thursday night, but if you're here on time, you're in. Otherwise, you come the next day, 30 minutes before, we'll have a priority entrance. Somehow, somebody's going to figure this out for me, and we go from there. If, you are, if it's 29 minutes to, all the doors are open, you missed it. And uh, then, you know, um, you know, come to encounter, deal with your heart. Whatever you ask going to happen is going to happen. Then, and we're going to seek the Lord. And so what I want to speak to you about today, actually about seeking the Lord. So Jeremiah 29 verse 13, it says this, And you will seek me and find me. You will seek me and you will find me. I'm so glad God's not hiding it's not, this is not a game of hide and seek. The Lord is not far from us. He says, you will seek me and you will find me. And I know we're going to find the Lord. And that the Lord wants to be found. And the Lord wants to be found amongst us. And the Lord wants to be with us. If it was hide and seek, we would never find him. <laughs> He'll be light years on some planet somewhere. We would never find him. But the Lord says, seek me and you will find me. But there's a second part to the scripture. It says, if you seek me, search for me with all your heart. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. How does the Lord, how does the Lord do this process of removing things from our heart? There's no, so there's no other idols in the heart. Because where there's idols in the heart, our heart is not all of, for the Lord. And, and the Lord right now is, is moving and purifying His church so that He has all of our hearts. And the Lord says, seek me, you'll find me. Search for me with all your heart. And I believe that the Lord takes us through a process, all of us. And in different levels. Because I have found, you know, you go with your Christian walk, you surrender, and you think you're done, and you've given everything to the Lord. But there's a different, there's another space. And then there's another space. And there's another surrender. And so the Lord is saying, seek me. 
give me your, give me your heart. Now, I want to talk you to, to, uh, with you today about how Moses went through a process of the Lord giving and uh, receiving Moses' heart, how the Lord walked through a process with Moses. And we see that in uh, second in, in Exodus. If you go to the, the book of Exodus, uh, Exodus is an interesting book because uh, it's chapter 1. You can see in my Bible here is just a, just a short little chapter from there to there is chapter 1. And then chapter 2 is another short little chapter. But that represented 80 years of Moses' life. The other 40 years took quite a few pages. But the first 80 years was just short, two short little chapters. But in those two little chapters, God had to rework an, a man's heart. Now, there's a lot of dispute in the Bible about how old Moses was. And I was reading in the, with the uh, tutorials and, and all of these things, the theologians, and they say people didn't live past 40 years old. And, and uh, maybe he was only 20 years old when he left Egypt. But I choose to believe the Bible. And let me read you the Bible in Acts chapter 7. Verse 23, it says this, that when he was 40 years old, it came into his heart. God's beginning to work with this man's heart. When he was 40, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And it was then that he saw the children of Israel being mistreated and he killed an Egyptian. And he had to flee Egypt. So we know, first of all, that he was 40 years old. And then it says in verse 30 that when 40 years had passed after that, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in a bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. That is the beginning of chapter 3. So the 40 and the 40. 80 years, church. 40 years he was in Egypt. And by the time you are 40, church, you are set in your ways. That's why it's difficult to get married at 40. Your toothbrush is in a certain place. Everything's in a certain place. You have a certain life. He is 40 years old in Egypt. I tell you, he is an Egyptian. He's an Egyptian. In his heart and in his head, he's an Egyptian. He's raised in Pharaoh's house. He has privileges. He has status. He has servants. He has a life. He's going places. In a worldly sense, he has it made. Anything he wants he can have it. He is schooled in Egypt. He partakes in the rituals of Egypt. He is an Egyptian. And God says, I want to I wanna work with you. Visits his heart. And then chapter, chapter 2. Another 40 years. And we see that he, he goes into, uh, he meets his father-in-law. He marries. And he's, he's part of a different life now. And we see it in chapter 3. His new life. So let's go to Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. And it says this, now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked 
And behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. And Moses said in his heart, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Church, here's a man that is 80 years old. And the, in the process of time, everything has been stripped from him. It says he was tending the sheep. The word tend indicates to us that this is now his job. He is a shepherd. And for an Egyptian, this was the least of the least of the least of the work you could do. He had gone from status to shepherd. Tending sheep. A man who would have been tended to is now tending sheep. After after 80 years on the earth, his life did not go forward naturally from Pharaoh's son to Pharaoh. It went from status to shepherd in the natural. Not only that, church, the sheep were not even his own. It was his father-in-law's. It's not even a business partner. It's your father-in-law. How my sheep, son? They're good, dad. 80 years old. And he no longer owns his own sheep. Not only that, church, the Bible says that he is at the back end of the desert. This is biblical code that says he's walked through life. He's been through everything, and he has not found what he was searching for. And I love that. I love that the Lord strips us of ambition. If you really want to be used of God, the Lord strips you of self. Of privilege. He's at the back end of the day desert. He's come to the end of his life. He is finished. But I love that because when we are finished, he begins. In the natural, he had gone backwards in life, but in the spirit, his heart went forward. And he was ready. You see, before that, you see, young people, we don't understand. We, we seek all these things. And Moses had discovered none of them satisfied. Don't take 80 years to discover that this world cannot satisfy you. Moses had come to the place where he had it all and nothing could satisfy him. He was searching. But 
the Bible says, seek me, you will find me. Now it says, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. So he said, I will turn aside and see. He looked, and then he turned. It's interesting language. Because really, he's looking at the bush. But he said, I will turn. His heart had just turned. Something had just happened. He looked. It wasn't he looked and he turned to go to it. It's that he, he looked and he turned to it. Are you hearing me? Is that there's, there's a place in God where, where God is there, but there, your heart must be, your heart must be filled with God. Must long for God. Don't just come to the house of the Lord and see the glory. Let your heart turn to the glory of God. And so he looked, but his heart turned. He was ready. In fact, what happened was his heart turned from his past. And he, and he went to the Lord. And it was there that the Lord was waiting. Because it says, when the Lord saw. Let's just read it again. It says, it says here, um, so when the Lord saw. Isn't that amazing? There's two people looking. Moses is looking and God is looking. Moses, Moses is looking, but God is looking at his heart. It's amazing that God doesn't, I mean, think about it, church. That this is critical. God's people are in bondage under Egypt. This is critical. The Messiah shall come out of these people. The tribes of Israel are in these people. Jerusalem is going to be birthed out of these people. This is critical. Why didn't God jump in front of Moses? He said, I'm here, Moses. Some of us are waiting for that. You, you, you want a Paul experience. You want to be kicked off the horse. Lord, if you're really interested in me, jump in front of me. God was looking at him. I think the Lord was saying, will he, will he do it? Will he be the man? Will he yield his life? Will he surrender his heart to me? Will he be the man I could trust with my glory? Will he be the man I can trust with my people? And God is looking. And when God saw that he turned, what is the first thing he said? Moses! Moses! I think God was saying, Moses is taking you 80 years, but I'm glad you are here. You are here, Moses. And Moses said, ah, I am here. Moses was now out of Egypt, and Egypt was now out of Moses. And here is Moses and God. He was ready. He's ready. You see, the... The presence of God is so valuable. It is only when your heart is empty that you perceive its value. That we long for His presence and we desire His presence. And I, I love what Moses says. Is, uh, I think it's Exodus 33 somewhere that Moses says, five times Moses says, it is you. It is your glory. It is your people. 
unless you go with me, I'm not going up. Oh God, I've been through Egypt. I've been through 40 years in the wilderness. I came to the end of myself. I found you. And unless you go with me, I'm not going. I value your presence so much, Lord. He, had, he was a hungry and thirsty man. He had discovered nothing else satisfied. It was his presence that satisfied. And that's why I love what, what God does and why this conference is so important. People don't understand why, why don't we just have, just, 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 you know, just have a Sunday morning service. No, thirsty land is never satisfied with one outpour. In fact, a thirsty land needs a continual rain to pour upon it so that it soaks in to the heart. That's where change comes. That's why I seek Him and why I love Him and why we seek Him Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The rain must fall. Some of you might not understand what I'm saying. This, this is not marketing. I'm talking to you in the spirit. It's why, it's why you're still dry. You have to seek the Lord and you will find Him. The presence of God sticks to hungry people like chewing gum sticks to the bottom of your shoe. How many of you, maybe not in Cape Town, have this experience? But how many of you have had that experience on a hot, sticky day when you walk on something and you just feel it attached to your shoe and it's in there and sticky? How many of you have had that experience? Right? And it's so hard to get it off. You have to get a sharp point and you, you go through it, but it's so soft. It just, you know, it stays there. That's the presence of God on a hungry soul. It stays there. But this is what I know. How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you get chewing gum off a carpet? Sorry? Ice. You, you take some ice and you chill it. You freeze it and it hardens and you take that knife and it comes off the carpet. And it's the same with the presence of the Lord. The moment a heart grows cold, we detach from the presence. That's why, that's why the chewing gum on the hottest day is the most sticky. And what I'm saying to you, is that if you want the presence to stick to you, stay in the fire. Get close to the fire. Get close to the presence. Get into the anointing. Worship in the anointing. Get into the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit. Get into the church of the Holy Spirit. Get into the glory of God. What's happening? You are being lit up. You're being fired up. And it sticks. And you go home. And it's still there. And you go to work, and it's still there. Hallelujah. That's why I love the Holy Ghost. That's why we will always be a church of the Spirit. That's why we will always pray in the Holy Ghost. I need the fire of the presence of God. And Moses got to the burning bush. Something stuck. He said, I will not go up unless you go with me. So when you, are, when you are thirsty, church, when you're hungry, when you are dry, seek the presence. And I'll just quickly finish with this. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longs for you. This deer that is being chased, being pursued by a predator, Longs for the escape of the water. That it would get into the water and its scent would be lost. Because the presence of God 
is not just there for dry people. Let me say this to you, two things. When you are dry, seek the presence. When you are in trouble, hide in the presence. Hide in the presence. Hide there. That's why Daniel could say, my God sent an angel to shut the mouths of the lion because he was a man of the presence. So the Bible says, he who dwells in the secret place. What does it say? You shall abide under the shelter, right? No weapon will come against you. No aim of flaming fire will come against you. He will protect you in the presence. When you are in trouble, hide in the presence. Some people say, I don't need to be in services because everything is going well. That's fine. So you're not dry. So you're not in trouble. Then I say to you, rejoice in the presence. Rejoice in the presence. So I love, I love, I love, I love you. Presence. How's it going? Yeah, we'll sing that song. I love your presence. Come on, just raise your hands, church. His presence is in this room. Just love him. Just love him. Just we got we have exactly just a couple of minutes. Why don't we stand? Oh, I love his presence. I love his presence. I love his presence more than church. Oh, I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him. Just love the Lord. Let your heart reach out to the Lord. Come on. Are you dry? Seek him. Are you in trouble? Hide in him. Oh, I love you. Come on, Cape Town. Stand up and lift your voices. Let's sing it together one more time. I love your presence. raise your hands church and just begin to talk to the Lord and tell him come and let your heart turn to the Lord turn to the Lord church turn to the Lord say I love you Jesus come on turn to the Lord tell him Lord I'm going to seek you I'm going to pursue you I am tired Lord of this world you see, the burning bush tells us this morning, it says, are you ready for me? Are you tired of this world? And it says, will you take off your shoes and follow me? Give me your life. Follow me. Follow me. And we surrender to you, Lord, and we will seek you. And I pray, Lord, that you would visit us this week. Visit our churches, Lord. Visit our houses, Lord. Visit our nation, Lord. Visit my life, Lord. I need your presence, Lord. I need you, Lord. Anybody pray in the Holy Ghost? Come on. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Come on, Cape Town. We're not ashamed of praying the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Spirit. Come on, Pastor Samuel. I hand over to you, Pastor Samuel. Kebra mambo robo shaka dere bende. Re mambo to shandere la shora bandele. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Be mamba mamba nande nende. Father, we bless you and we love you. Won't you raise your hands one more time? I bless you, church. I speak life over you. Come on, if you've never received Jesus as your Savior, you've never accepted Him as your Lord, pray this prayer with me. Let's all pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I surrender my life. I give you my life. I want to follow you. Forgive me for rejecting you. 
come into my heart. Wash me and cleanse me from all my sins. I give my life to you. Lead me, Lord Jesus Christ. You are the Son of God. I believe. I believe. Right now. In Jesus' name. And church, I bless you. And speak life upon you. And the Lord, Lord, I pray, go ahead of us this week. In Jesus' name. And everybody with faith said, Amen. Amen.